Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. First, thanks so much for more than 20 guys subscribed to my channel this week. All of my subscribers are amazing. Nowadays, a bunch of games have the level up system. When the player receives enough experience during the battle or mission achievement, our player status will increase automatically. The obvious change might be the status differences. In game design, that will be a great feedback for our user. First, let's take a look at our demo. This is one simple level up system. Each click or each press will add 200 experience to our player. We need 1000 experience to reach level 2. When the player is level 2, we need more. We need to receive much more experience than our previous hand. Also, we will make the level up animations to our UI cameras. The profile will be updated at a certain level. All detailed data and sprites has been stored in our script. In the real game, our player can attack the enemy and increase the experience. In our demo, we use press speed buttons instead. In this game, our max level is 10, and when we get to the level 10, it should not have any error reports in our game. Also, the current experience cannot increase anymore. We will talk about how to nicely structure our inspector, how to use an array, UI elements, and many other things. I have separated into three parts to complete this small demo. After we complete this demo, perhaps in the next time, we can create one gallery system holding more than one player in our game. No matter how many players we have, we can receive their data when we want. By the way, we are using Unity 2D projects. All resources and complete projects can be downloaded below. So feel free and take them out. Alright, let's get started. Now, we have created one Unity 2D project. In this episode, we will need two sprites and one font. Let's create some folders to manage our assets folder. Then drag the resources into their own folder. If you don't know how to slice the sprites, you can follow my step or watch my previous video. Grid by cell size option is available for the slicing type and very handy in this case because our sprites has been laid out in a regular pattern during creation. After slicing two sprites, we need one UI image to display our player. Let's create a UI canvas. The canvas scalar component is used for controlling the overview scale and pixel density UI elements in the canvas. Using the scale with screen size mode, the position and the size can be specified according to the pixels of a specified reference resolution. The other settings we don't really have to worry about. Then we create one UI panel to hold all of our UI elements in this episode. Create one UI image called player image and drag one of the sprites into the source image slot as your player image. Then adjust the position and size. Right-click on the hierarchy, click on Create Empty Game Object, and we are going to call this one player. This one is going to be a game object that is going to hold our player status script. Then create one c -sharp script called Player Status. This script can hold all of the data from our player and control the level up system. Drag the c -sharp script to the player game object and then reset the position. The reset the transform can save your work in many cases in here. Just one good habit. Inside the Visual Studio, first, we have to think about which kind of status of our player have. In this case, we will need the player name, type public, string type, name. There is one yellow dash under our variable's name because our name has inherent members object.name. Actually, you can leave him alone or continue, but it will cause some confusions for your teammates or others. Visual Studio recommend you to use the keyword new to solve this error. The simple way is to use another variable name. So let's replace these variable names with player name. 
just making sure everything is correct. We may have one description to describe our player and tell his story. Also, because we are making the level up systems, we should have some basic variables such like the integer type, the level, and the max level. When we receive enough experience, we can reach to a higher level. So we need integer type variables, current experience, and the next level experience. The next level experience will tell us how much experience we need to have more before we live up. Actually, if you want your script looks clean and easy to read, you can remove this line and write it all in one line. Also, we need to have our player's health point and magic point value, including their maximum value. Finally, we can display his attack and defense point in our canvas. Okay, we have almost complete the first step. So, save my script and switch back. You will be able to see all of the variables name in Inspector and allocate values to it. Now you can type something to try. You can edit your first player now. Attention to here, if our player is level 1, for example, we may have to receive more than 1000 experience to level up. When we are level 2, we might have to get 1100 experience. Level 3, we might need 1300 experience. Level 4, might 1500 experience and so on. You will notice that each level, we have different next level experience variables values. So integer type is not very handy in this point. The most direct way to store a collection of the same type is using array. After the type of the variables, we use open and close square brackets. It's important to make the distinction that an array is not a type, but a collection of variables of a certain type. Now our next level experience is no longer one single variable. You can jump back to Unity and check. If our max level is 10, our array will have 10 variables. You can manually set up each numbers in the inspector. For instance, if we want to reach to level 2, we have to get 1000 experience. The reason I skipped the first variables of this array is that our player level start from 1. If I import numbers start from 0, it will cause a little confusion to read and type. You can import from 0, but for others to watch directly, we can skip the 0 and start from 1. In the next level, we might need 1300, 1500, and so on. The higher level, the more experience our players need to receive. However, think about one thing. If our max level is 100, and there are 10 players in our games, that will be a huge work for us to edit. Fortunately, we can initialize our array in the star functions instead of importing manually. To specify the length, we have used the new keyword, followed by the type of the array and the numbers of the elements in square brackets. Because we only have 10 levels, so we only need to have 10 variables in the array. Back to Unity and check it. When we press play, there is 10 slots in our array. Now all variables are the default value 0. We want our each number is greater than our previous one. We can type next level experience array with the index of the elements i is equal to the next level experience array with the index of the elements i minus 1. Then multiply by 1.1 float. The red line allows us to check because both sides have the different type now. Our next level experience index i is the integer type variables, where on the right side is the float type variables. We have to use one method to convert different type now. We can see we have one error now. He says the index outside the boundary of the array. Pause the video and think about it. The reason is that if i is equal to 0, the next level experience array index 0 is equal to next level experience index minus 1 multiplied by 1.1 float. However, our array starts from 0, and there is no index minus 1 number appear in the array. So I can start from 1 and instead of the 0, then try to test again. There's still nothing on here. Why? Pause the video and think about it. 10 seconds later, let's fix it. 
The reason is very simple. Actually, there are the values and all values are zero. Our initial value is zero, so that all of the variables multiplied by zero are zero. Inside the star methods, we can access and initialize elements of the array by using the name of array followed by square brackets containing the index of the element. The index of an element is simply an integer with the first index being zero. Now we can see each variables have different values according to the math formula. From level 1 to level 2, we need 1000 experience. From level 2 to level 3, we need 1100 experience and so on. However, our player from level 1 to level 2 need 1000 experience. Inside the array, the elements start from 0. It's hard to read in later. So we can start at 2. Now back to Unity and see the result. That will be easy to read for the user. Then we can create one method. This function is targeted to add a certain amount of experience to our player. In the update method, when we press the spacebar, the methods will be called one time. In a real game, after killing the enemy, we can call the add experience methods as well. For example, when we press the space bar, our player can easily achieve 200 experience. We can back to Unity and see whether our current progress is correct or not. At the beginning of the game, our current experience is zero. When we press space, each press will increase 200 experience to our player. Now we did not see any other differences when we level up, so let's continue to it. We want our experience reached to 1000 to level up. All data will increase a little bit. We can use one if statement condition. If our current experience is greater than the next level experience, because the next experience is one array, the index is our current player level. So inside the square brackets, we type player level. If we match these conditions, we want our player level up. We can create another method. This new method will be responsible for all of the situation when the, our player level up. Our purpose of creating a new method instead of writing all a bunch of the codes inside the if condition is that making our codes easy to read and keep it clean. We want our player growing up, so the player levels plus plus. Also, we want our current experience can clear because we don't want to see a long list of the numbers in our data. After completing, back to Unity and try it. We need 1000 experience to reach level 2. Focus on this position. When we reach level 2, this part should change according to our script. Perfect. But when we receive a negative number, pause the video and think about 10 seconds. The reason is the order of our methods. Our current experience is minus next level experience number. This must be a negative number. If we want to try to change the order of these two lines, it will work. The Unity will run our methods from top to bottom from this order. Try again. Cool. Now the value is positive, which means we are correct. Then let's finish the remaining data. We want our max health point increased by 200 each level. We can easily to type plus equals to 200. See the result. Also, you can multiply by 1.2 float. If you set like this, your maximum HP will increase higher than each previous maximum HP at each level. For our maximum magic point, we want to increase to a fixed number. When we level up, we want our current HP MP reset to the maximum value. For our attack and defense, we can multiply them by 1.1 float. There are two methods to convert float type to int. One is called sale to int methods. Another is run to int. The only difference is, is their return. Sale to int returns the smallest integer greater to or equal to parameter. 
while the round to int returns the parameter round to the nearest integer. We almost complete all of the studies in our player. Press the button and check. We can close our array part in order to focus on our studies now. When we press the space bar, if we receive 1000 experience, all of the data has changed. Perfect. Check again. When we reach level 3 or level 5, is that all data has changed? Great. Let's see if we reach to the level 10. No errors, right? Cool. But try to press again. We will receive some errors in our console. Why? Because when we reach level 10, we don't want to add any experience to our player anymore. So we need to type another if condition. We use an operator. The logic an operator returns the boolean value true if both conditions are true. If one of them does not match the requirement, we cannot run the body of content. We can change the amount of variables to 600 to increase our speed. When we reach level 10, no error on here. However, when we press again, still have some errors. Why? So we need to continue to type if the player level is greater than the max level, our current experience should always zero. Mm, it's still not working. Oh, because I forgot to type the greater equal instead of the equal then. We need to consider all of the conditions. Try again. Hmm, still have a problem. Pause the video and think about it. Each condition works correct, but still exists one problem now. If we are coding along, how to fix that error? I give you one minute to think about it. The first way to fix some errors in Unity is to double click the errors on the console window and find the error lines. The console window allows you to track the errors easily from your codes. He said our this line has the bad logic. Let's see. This line seems no error on it. But think about our gameplay. This error happened when we reached to the level 10 and press the space bars again. Our player level is 10. However, our next level experience, the index 10, does not exist. Remember, our array length is 10, but the star at 0. So the last index of the array is 9. So index 10 is outside of our boundary of this array. That's the reason why we always keep errors. Another reason is that we escape the first index of our array. We only have 9 real values inside this array, but we have 10 levels. Because we did not have the index 10 in our array, in star methods we can add value 1 to enlarge our array length. Also, because our player current experience will transfer to zero when we reach to the level 10, we did not need any values inside the next level experience, so just create it and keep it exist. So don't worry about the last index variables. Fixing that error, try to understand the array range, back to Unity and see the final result. When we press the space bar, everything works fine. After that, press again. There is no error now and the current experience is still zero. Cool. All right, this is the end of this video. In the next episode, part two, we will add some obvious UI elements to display our player's status. Additional, more UI features will be introduced to you. The text version of the videos has been attached to the link below. Also, all resources can be downloaded from my Google Drive and GitHub. For more videos about Unity tutorials, 
Photoshop's Adobe Illustrator and the Game Design, you can click my profiles and subscribe to my channel. I'm so appreciate. See you in the next time.